I don't understand what baking soda really is. I know it's a chemical, but like, what is it? Baking soda, or as it's properly known, sodium bicarbonate, is a salt of sodium cations and the bicarbonate anion. Both of these parts are important. The sodium kind of makes it such that it's really not harmful, but the bicarbonate anion is what's special because it's both an acid and a base at the same time, what we in the business call amphoteric. Sodium bicarbonate also decomposes pretty easily into relatively harmless byproducts, namely carbon dioxide and water. We didn't know about its chemical properties until fairly recently, but it's been used since ancient times because it occurs as one of three minerals, natron, trona, and nacolite, each of which have differing amounts of sodium bicarbonate and other things in it. The Egyptians are frequently credited with recording and using natron extensively for a lot of the same things we use it for, cleaning, toothbrushing, food preserving. They use it in the mummification process, and their records are thought to be how it spread further through the ancient world. But nobody really knew what it was until roughly 1801, when Valentin Rose the Younger is credited with discovering what sodium bicarbonate is. 60 years later, Ernst Solvay is the chemist who's credited with developing the Solvay process, wherein you can make sodium bicarbonate from a mixture of salt water, ammonia, and carbon dioxide gas that you bubble through it. So the Solvay process was pretty great because it allows for the production of sodium bicarbonate in places where you can't mine it. With the development of better mining technologies and new sites to mine it from, we don't need the Solvay process primarily, and thus we do mine a fair amount of it now. It's not mined like how other minerals are mined because it's not formed how other minerals are formed. And this has to do a lot with the chemistry of sodium bicarbonate and carbonates in general. When you have water just sitting out, say in a freshwater lake, if there's carbon dioxide in the air above that water, the carbon dioxide will dissolve in that water. And when it does this, eventually it will make carbonic acid or bicarbonates. Now, as that lake then dries up over hundreds of thousands of years, all those carbonates and bicarbonates that were in that water stay in that water and eventually become the minerals trona, natron, or nacolite that get mined for their bicarbonate. Once these minerals are mined, depending upon which one it is, it goes through various types of purification processes, sometimes involving selective recrystallization, sometimes involving centrifugation and precipitation, depending upon the mineral and the grade. But at the end of it, you end up with pretty pure sodium bicarbonate. And while it's pretty easy to appreciate a lot of the uses of baking soda just from using it to do a lot of the things that it does, understanding why it does what it does. Well, that's just fun, and that's probably why you're here. So there are two things here, the amphoteric nature, the fact that it's both an acid and a base at the same time, and that it can decompose pretty easily into things that aren't that harmful. So the first part, the acid-base nature, that's part of where the odor neutralizing comes from. A lot of things that have odors are either acid sensitive or base sensitive. And in the presence of enough base or acid, these molecules will undergo acid-base reactions. Once that occurs, well, it's a chemical reaction. It's a whole other molecule now. And a lot of times, it doesn't have a smell anymore. The fact that it's also a base at the same time is why you can use it as an antacid, because the bicarbonate will react with the acid in your stomach, which is a stronger acid than the bicarbonate, to neutralize it and turn it into carbon dioxide and water. And this helps to kind of calm and relax and relieve some stomach distress and issues that are caused by a buildup of too much acid. The cleaning is another thing that comes out of it being an acid and a base at the same time, because some stains and some things that get stuck to our clothes or to surfaces in general are easier to remove if you can react them with a mild acid, think cleaning with vinegar, or if you can react them with a mild base, again, baking soda. Do not use them at the same time no. In fact, to a certain degree, using baking soda by itself is kind of like using an acid and a base at the same time, which gets me to the other thing that it's really good at, decomposing into more or less harmless things. Baking soda, if you heat it to just around 80 to 100 degrees Celsius, it starts to react with itself because again, it is an acid and a base at the same time. And when it does this, it turns into washing soda, which is sodium carbonate, as well as a molecule of carbon dioxide and a molecule of water. 
If you heat it up in the oven, it turns into carbon dioxide. It creates that leavening, that gas that gives you all the pores. This thermal decomposition of sodium bicarbonate is also why you can use it to fight fires. Because if you take baking soda and you put it on a relatively small fire, what happens is the heat from the fire starts turning that baking soda, that sodium bicarbonate, into carbon dioxide and water, but also sodium carbonate, which itself doesn't really melt and helps to smother the fire simply by being present. In addition to the carbon dioxide that's being produced, which helps to get rid of the oxygen and the water that's being produced, which helps to absorb some of the heat. So after all of that, you're probably like, oh man, this stuff is like great. I mean, how do you not have it in your house? And yeah, I mean, like we got it in our bodies. Like if you didn't know that whole amphoteric nature, both an acid and a base, that's how your blood makes sure that it stays at the right pH. In fact, if you have too much carbonate in your blood, your blood is too basic. And so one of the things that gets done in medical practices when somebody is experiencing severe acidosis of the blood is to inject them with a solution of sodium bicarbonate. This bit is speculation on my part, a little bit. But if you haven't seen the video I did with the octopus lady talking about alkaline hydrothermal vents and the origin of life, you should go check it out. The moral of that story though, is that it was the carbonate chimneys around these alkaline hydrothermal vents that helped to create an environment that might have been how life started. And so part of what makes baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, and carbonates in general, relatively well tolerated by biological systems may just be because we co-evolved to just have it be part of our bodies. Even with that though, you can use too much of it. So please do be mindful if you drink baking soda water regularly or use it for things regularly that it is still a substance that in large quantity can harm you. Especially if you get the dust in your eye, that sucks. That really sucks. Please be careful not to do that. So in short, baking soda is an amphoteric salt that decomposes under relatively mild conditions into mostly innocuous things. It's a good chance it co-evolved with us or a lot of life on the planet. And because of these reasons, it just finds a bunch of uses and you don't often find stuff that's kind of this wildly important, but yeah, here you are, that's what it is. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you found it interesting. Appreciate it if you hit that like button. If you got any questions, please throw them in the comments. Until next time, Skim Thug.